Hi guys, and welcome aboard to the coolest coding adventure with your very own DIY gaming console, Fit. In this video, we'll guide you through some basic coding and show you how to code your first game, just like the wacky robots did. Let's kick things off. Step 1 is to take the USB cable from the kit and connect bit to your computer. If you're new here, you first need to create an account. You can use your email and create a password or just use your Google account. Alright, now that we're all set up, let's check the main menu. Here you will find a button for creating a new sketch and next to it you'll have access to your saved sketches in the future. At the top of the site, you'll see an option to restore firmware. This will allow you to reset bit to its original state. We'll show you how this works at the end of the video. To start coding, click on the new sketch. Type in rock, paper, scissors because that's what the wacky robots named this game. Since your device is still running the stock firmware, meaning that it still has games that come with the device, you first need to install MicroPython onto it. We can also hide the code editor since we'll be using blocks. First up, let's lay the groundwork with some variables. Every variable has a specific name and you can store and change its value. Find the Variables section and click the Create Variable button. Let's name the variable CPU Hand. We have a variable now. Great! We can create all the variables we will need for this sketch immediately. Just repeat the same process you did when creating the variable CPU Hand. These other variables are CPU hand display, player hand, result text, picker variable, win, lose, and draw. When we create a variable, it's undefined, it has no value. We must set a value for every variable when our program starts. That's why you'll need the set variable block. Drop the set variable block into the drawing area. Now click on the variable name and select CPU hand from the drop down menu. This variable will determine whether your opponent has chosen rock, paper or scissors. But for now, let's define it as an empty text block. Go to the text block section, take the empty text block and connect it with the set variable to block, just like playing with puzzles. Now we will define the next variable. Let's duplicate these blocks by right-clicking on the set variable to block and selecting the duplicate option. Connect these new blocks with the previous two blocks, change the variable to CPU hand display and put a question mark inside the text block. This variable defines what will be displayed on the screen as your opponent's chosen option. At the start of the game, it will just be a question mark. Repeat this process for the following variable, player hand. Define it as paper at the start of the game, but remember, you will be able to change it before showing it to your opponent. Let's define the following variable, result text, as an empty text block, just like we did with CPU hand. The following three variables, win, lose and draw, will be defined with boolean operators. These can be true or false. We will define all of them as false at the start of the game, as shown here. Finally, it's time to define the last variable called picker variable. This one randomly generates rock, paper or scissors for your opponent. To do that, we will need a block from the math block section called random integer from 2. We will need to fill in these blanks, so take the 1 to 3 block from the math block section and put it inside both of these empty slots. 
Your opponent can choose between three options correlating with this generated number, so set these values to 1 and 3. Great, now let's define that correlation. Add the if do block from the logic block section. Now click on the little gear icon and adjust it by dragging the else if and else statements, as shown here. Let's define what will happen if the picker variable is randomly set to 1. Add this comparison block from the logic block section. Now put the picker variable inside it and the value of 1. These two will then be compared, and if they match, the blocks inside the do section will be executed. If that happens, we want the CPU hand to be set to rock, so put these blocks here and write rock. Let's define what will happen if the picker variable is randomly set to 2 in that last step. Duplicate these blocks and change the value to 2. You can also duplicate these blocks and change the text to paper. Finally, if neither happens, set the CPU hand to scissors. Remember how we set the player hand variable to paper? Now we want to be able to change our options using the left and right buttons. Add the when button release block from the IO block section and set the button to right. We want the right button to change our option from paper to scissors, scissors to rock, or rock to paper until we decide which one we want to choose. To do that, add another if do block and adjust it like we did previously. To be able to change our choice from paper to scissors, add these blocks. If we click and release this button again, it will be changed to rock. To achieve that, add these blocks. If you keep clicking this button, your choices will change and get back to paper, then scissors, rock, and so on. Great! Now we want to be able to change them in the other direction using the left button. So this left button will change them from paper to rock, from rock to scissors, and from scissors back to paper. Let's copy this whole set of blocks. Change it to the left button and change the order as shown here. Now that we have the ability to choose for ourselves, let's define what will happen when we release the A button. We want the program to check our chosen options and decide who is the winner. For that, we'll need another if do block and add more else if statements as shown here. If the player's hand is equal to the CPU hand, it's a draw. Now let's check how to win. One of the possible combinations would be that we picked rock while the opponent has chosen scissors. We will need the end block from the logic block section to define that. Put the comparison block on both sides and compare the player hand to rock in the first one and the CPU hand to scissors in the second one, as shown here. Set the win to true if that happens.
Another combination would be that we picked scissors and the opponent chose paper. Duplicate these blocks and change them as shown here. Finally, the same outcome would apply if we chose paper and the opponent chose rock, so add that one as well. If we didn't win and it's not a draw, then we must have lost, so we don't need to define those combinations. Just put set lose to true inside the else statement. We also want to be able to reset the game so that we can play again. We'll do that by releasing the B button. Put the when B button released from the IO block section. First, we want the win, lose and draw to reset to false. That way we neither lost, won or drew the game. We are back at the beginning. We can duplicate that from the beginning of our code. We can also duplicate these blocks since we want the CPU hand display to show a question mark again and the results text to be empty. Now the picker variable needs to be reset again and a new option needs to be chosen for your opponent. To do that, copy this set of blocks we defined at the beginning. Great, we're done with the inputs. Let's add a loop forever block from the loops block section. Whatever we place inside will constantly be checked and it will ensure that the game runs smoothly. Here we'll define what happens if we win, lose or draw. Add another if do block and adjust it like shown here. If we win, we want the background to turn green, our opponent's chosen option to be shown to us and the results text to display you won. To achieve that, first put the win block into the if statement. Now find the fill frame width block from the display block section and change it to green. Next, set the CPU display hand to CPU hand. And finally, set the result text to you won, like this. Let's now define what happens if we lose. Let's put the lose block here and now for the outcome. The background will turn red. The CPU display hand will be set to CPU hand, just like when we win. The results text will display the message you lost. Finally, if we draw, the background color will be set to black and the results text will say draw. Everything else remains the same. If neither of these conditions are met, we want the background color to be black, so let's add that. Now we want all of this to be written on the screen, so that we know what's going on at any moment. Add the write block from the display block section. Put the text CPU hand at coordinates x equals 2 and y equals 5 in white, as shown here. Bits display has a 128 times 128 pixel resolution, so these coordinates match those pixels. Now let's write the CPU hand display at coordinates x equals 2 and y equals 15 in white. Write the results text at coordinates x equals 2 and y equals 50 in white. Now, for our own hand, write the message your hand at coordinates x equals 2 and y equals 90 in white. And finally, write player hand at coordinates x equals 2 and y equals 100 in white. 
This is what we want to achieve. When coding anything on the display, we must put the push frame block from the display block section at the end. Otherwise, nothing will show. We must also include the scan buttons block within this loop forever block to ensure proper code execution. And let's also set the sleep 50 milliseconds block at the end. This block determines the amount of time that will pass before the conditions are checked again. Well done! You're done with coding! Click on the Run button in the top right corner to upload the code to your device. Now try pressing the left and right buttons to see what happens. When you've decided which option to choose, click the A button. Did you win or lose, or was it a draw? If you want to play again, click on the B button to reset the game. Have fun and congratulations! You were able to program a new game onto your device just like the Wacky Robots. If you want to put the stock firmware back onto your device, you can just go here and click on the Restore Firmware button. Thank you for watching this video and see you on the next level!